If you wrap a prusik around a rope, it'll typically slip before the prusik breaks. It usually doesn't grab the rope strong enough in order to break the rope itself. Now, what happens if you want to tension two ropes at the same time? If you wrap the prusik around both ropes, will it slip before it breaks? Or will it break the rope? Or will it even grab it all? This is just an old strand of rope we were testing with earlier today. So it's dead ended here to a fixed point with load cell. This is a single three wrap prusik around both ropes. We're gonna choke it up. We're gonna set it hard, just like we did out there. And the goal is to see what it fails at. I assume it's gonna slide down the rope and come off the ends, no stopper knots there. Um, and hopefully it will have enough gripping strength that we're not worried about it slipping when we use it in real life. Hopefully it grips, okay. Yeah. And then you know we yeah. compare it to a single strand and then we'll put it on 11 millimeter, hopefully, which is skinnier. So the ratio between Prusik to host rope is less ideal. Four. Seven. Ooh. Ten. That's going to break the rope. 15, uh. 16. Holy moly, it's scary to stand next to that. Uh, 19.78. That sounded like a 19.78. I can't hear anything else now. <laughs> it uh, it didn't slip. Yeah, yeah, that's plenty strong enough. I, I'm shocked that the cordage broke before the prusik slipped. We, we oftentimes use prusiks like clutches so that if we did hang the basket up, we would hope to see it slip a little bit before we could overload the system. Before you overload these ropes. Yeah, where we hurt somebody potentially if they're pinched between the basket and the train, for example. Mm, so, But that's on single strands. That is on single strands. Oh, yeah. these are where the okay. rabbits start coming out of the holes. I would have thought it slid quicker on double strand than it did on single. I actually grabbed better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're just gonna try single strand for comparison's sake. Cool how it twists the rope. What number are we at? Five. Oh, what's it slipping at? There, there is smoke coming off of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and country dust. That's uh the 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 heartbeat of a Prusik. Slipping prusik. So yeah, peak force was nine. So, so what's going to basically happen is eventually this is going to heat up enough to where one of these will melt to the other, and then uh, then it'll go all the way to failure, which of course I think we should do. All right. All right. So like duck. That prusik like. is about twice as long as it was when it started. Yeah, the prusik is really long. I mean, maybe it's not going to melt. Oh, come on. It's just so fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So six, if six you're is here. And into a cliff at six or seven, you're going to be much more injured than you were. Yes. Yeah, you don't want to see six or seven. Right. No. So what would you do if you wanted it to slip? You don't wrap it less. It mm -hmm. wouldn't work. The haul <laughs> team needs to be. What well, you're one hundred percent right. Actually, there's good technique on the the sharp end of the rope, keeping that yeah. basket clear of obstructions, rigging clean systems. But more importantly, the haul team, who oftentimes it's not even trained people. It's just whoever you have on scene that you kind of deputize. Uh, but there's got to be one person on that team that knows if it suddenly gets harder, we need to stop. It's not a tug of war where <laughs> we bear down and pull hard. Um, yeah. Because yeah. Yeah, you could absolutely squish somebody between the basket and the train. Before you slipped. Yes. And then you're actually damaging the rope too. Mm -hmm. Like that's not good for your rope. Right. And the reason we use the Prusix is so that theoretically it's gentler on the rope than say like a Gibbs Ascender or a Rescue Sender or a toothed device. Gentler, not so gentle. Not super gentle, but it shouldn't part your rope <laughs> yeah. without first having some sort of... I've indication. always called the sheath a shock absorber. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen the Prusik de-sheath the rope once. All right, so now we're going to switch to 11 millimeter host rope. Um, all of this gear, by the way, is old. It's retired, and that's why we're destroying it here. Uh, the fire department wouldn't let me take the good stuff. So... Uh, bear in mind that these results, uh, we're just comparing apples to apples, but if you had brand new gear, hopefully the numbers would be better. 
Yeah. Um, the but it's still pretty of, good for old gear. Yeah. This is old and worn, so the coefficients of friction between the host rope and the press are going to be a little different. A lot That's, higher. It's grippier. Yeah. It's grippier when it's older. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. When it's brand new, um, it slips a little earlier than you might want it to sometimes. Ready? Ready, boys? You good? So it looks like we got more surface area, right? Certainly. And you're worried about this gap in between not being grabbed. At least it I was. Is. Well, I mean, look at that. It just squeezes it together and there is no gap. Yeah. yeah. So, and again, the material broke. That Prusik did not slip at all. Um, yeah, it doesn't slip when you do two. Yeah. And this is 11 mil. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and we got peak force of 13.23. This rope is 11 mil. Yeah, this rope's right. 11, it's and this is 8 on 11 is... But our, we got way less on the Prusik, and it broke in a different spot. Mm -hmm. True. Yep. These Prusiks we got, are... Well, they could have a huge variety on their own. Old, 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 yeah. Yeah, I didn't expect the material to be breaking. I thought they would just right. slip the hitch. I mean, 13 still strong. Yeah. But it's not slipping. Let's try single strand. Single strand. Please. Just... Ooh, it's sliding. Oh, it's sliding. What's it sliding at? Uh, 6.1 now, peak is 8. Weird. Interesting. The longer it's So, on... was it going down the whole time? That, because the inside of the press is, is getting glazed, maybe? Mm. No, longer... I mean, yeah, I think the, the inside longer... is getting glazed. What are your thoughts? That's how I expected it per to perform. Um, oh, on the other one. <laughs> on the other one, yeah. yeah. Me too. So uh, I'm happy with it. That's plenty strong for everything that we're going to do with it. Feel and nice. um, that had the clutch of the rope on better side. than any of the other ones. It didn't have like that hold too tight slip thing. Mm. Oh, that's neat. Cool. You know what the longevity of this rope is? So... Five minutes in the slack snap machine. Yeah, yeah, there we go. We retired after 10 years, typically, um, if it hasn't had a rough life. So it's at least 10 years old, probably more like 15. And um, in good shape, obviously, in terms of its use and abuse. I thought what was interesting here is that on that half-inch rope, it kind of had that pulsing skip. And this one was just a smooth yeah. descent. And I don't know if that's a dynamic of the diameter host rope to Prusik or just the sheath on this rope is more slippery than on that half inch. Mm -hmm. This one, for whatever reason, didn't really get fused. It's yeah. glazed for sure, but it comes off no problem. It didn't pulse, which is yeah. also like it wasn't melting. Whoa! Was that from this test? Yeah, this was... Wow, much... yeah, yeah, because we broke the other one yeah we've destroyed everything so far so i mean oh that's gnarly glazing gnarly but <laughs> yeah, it didn't, that is didn't cool. melt like the other one did together not together it didn't melt yeah mm -hmm. let us know if uh you guys want this type of content because it doesn't get a hundred thousand views when we make this stuff uh we need to know if you like it so put that in the comments below smash stuff that looks like this and uh thanks for watching